Morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody. For those of you that do not know me, uh, my name is Lucrezia Caon and I'm the coordinator of the Global Soil Laboratory Network, GLOSOLAN, that you know uh, it's a network that will serve as umbrella to the International Network on Fertilizer Analysis, INFA, the, the network that we are about to start to, to launch today. I would like to quickly show you the agenda so that we are all on the same page and we know what to expect from these two days meeting. Uh, you, you might be able to see my, the agenda on, on screen. So today uh, it, it's really about introduction. So we will in, introduce you to the reasons behind the establishment of this network, of the International Network of uh, Soil Analysis, and give you a bit of background on, uh, on the initiatives connected to, to this network. So we will talk about the Global Soil Laboratory Network, Glossolan, and a publication that the Global Soil Partnership launched this year, actually last year, the International Code um, of Conduct for the Use and Management of uh, Fertilizers, because INFA is strictly connected to this code. Uh, thereafter, we will hear from, uh, from some stakeholders from the policy sector, the industry, um, the laboratories, and so on on the importance of uh, harmonizing fertilizer analysis. So we will have a panel discussion followed by a general discussion in which you can actually interact with the panelists and also share your experience in fertilizer analysis. And uh, we close today with the, the definition of the mission and objectives of uh, INFA. So what should we expect from, uh, from this network? Tomorrow, it's really about uh, decision-making. So we will define the governance of the network and uh, we will define its uh, work plan. So really activities and, uh, and time uh, frame. Now I would like to actually give the floor, actually open the meeting and uh, give the floor to Ms. Rosa Poch, the chair of the Intergovernmental Technical Panel on Soil for her opening remarks. Unfortunately, uh, Ms. Poch cannot be with us today, but she sent us a video message. So I will play the video message for on her behalf. We cannot hear the video. Lucrezia, we cannot hear the video. You have to uh, start sharing your screen again and share computer screen eh, in, in the below left side of your screen when you share. Okay, sorry. So I stopped sharing. This is the first time I played. And then I share it again. Yes. Sir. But before clicking on share, you need to share computer sound. And where do I do this? in the below left corner you have to tick ah uh, yes so sorry sorry it's the first time i do this okay let's try again good morning ladies and gentlemen it is my great pleasure to welcome all of you to the launch meeting of the international network on fertilizer analysis the infra the need for a network on fertilizer analysis has been increasingly recognized since the establishment of the Global Soil Laboratory Network, the GLOSOLAN, in 2017. It was created indeed with the objective to build and strengthen the capacity of laboratories in soil analysis, as well as to respond to the need for harmonizing soil analytical data. Natural and synthetic fertilizers are broadly used in agriculture to support plant growth and increase yields. But how can we ensure their quality and safety? Indeed, the International Code of Conduct for the Sustainable Use and Management of Fertilizers, 
which was launched last year, recommends regulation related to the sale, distribution, and labeling of fertilizer products, whatever appropriate. For sure, laboratory analyses are the first step to assess the quality of fertilizers and amendments, which has a direct impact on soil quality and health. For example, without the proper fertilizer analysis, it is impossible to establish optimal doses to make precise fertilizer recommendations or to compare products for different countries or producers or to compare yields upon the application of fertilizers obtained in different sites or in different years or to ensure that we don't harm the quality of our soils and waters. If we make a comparison related to human health, we know that vet stick protocols are followed before a vaccine or a drug are allowed to be used in humans. So we should care for the health of our soils in the same way, claiming for equivalent requirements when we apply fertilizers to them. Since its establishment, the achievements of the Glossola Network, which has more than 600 registered laboratories, have been so remarkable that countries and partners asked Glossola to also look into the harmonization of methods for fertilizer analysis. In response, to the requests moved by Glossolan members and partners, and in relation to the implementation of the International Code of Conduct for the Sustainable Use and Management of Fertilizers, the Global Soil Partnership finally decided to launch the International Network on Fertilizer Analysis, the INFA. INFA will operate under the umbrella of Glossolan. And this network will add to the previously created networks in the frame of the Global Soil Partnership as the International Network of Black Soils, the International Network of Salt Affected Soils, or the International Network of Soil Information Institutions. It will surely contribute to the application of the International Code of Conduct for the sustainable use and management of fertilizers, which is an important tool for implementing the voluntary guidelines for sustainable soil management, with a special regard to global threats on soils and waters and atmosphere as nutrient imbalances, soil pollution, and greenhouse gas emissions. The objectives of this meeting are therefore to launch the network, to define the mission and objectives of INFA, and to define the work plan of INFA, including cooperation opportunities between laboratories. On behalf of the Global Soil Partnership and the Intergovernmental Technical Panel on Soils, I would like to thank you all for being here today and for believing in INFA even before this meeting was organized. Indeed, I would like to thank those of you that provided information on national fertilizer regulations and who completed the online survey on fertilizer quality assessment. Your inputs were greatly appreciated and will be used to build the discussion during this two days meeting. I wish you a fruitful, and constructive meeting. Thank you. So uh, this was uh, Ms. Rosal Poch, the chair of the Intergovernmental Technical Panel on Soil, sending us her greetings and wishing us a fruitful meeting that I'm sure we, we will have. Uh, following the agenda, um, we're actually making a, a brief break uh, in the agenda. I would like to ask you to please turn on your cameras and give us your best smile. We are going to take a group picture. 
So although we cannot meet in person, at least we have a memory uh, of all of us. So please turn on your cameras and uh, Filippo will kindly take uh, the, the group picture for us. Filippo, let me know when you are done. Sure, big smile. This moment it will take a few seconds because we have a lot of people, so we have a different screen. Okay, done. Thank you. Perfect. Many thanks, Filippo, and many thanks for all of you for giving us your best smile. Now we are ready to start with the technical part of, of the meeting. So I would like to give the floor to Mr. Ronald Vargas, the Secretary of the Global Soil Partnership for introducing us to the reasons behind the establishment of this network. So Ronald, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Lucrezia. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all. Thank you very much for joining the launch of this important network. Indeed, uh, well, Ms. Poch already explained a bit on why this network, but now I will make a presentation in order to show you why this network. And definitely you need to understand that in FAO, our core mandate is food security and nutrition. Therefore, the agriculture and how to produce crops are an inherent part of it. Therefore, it is a part of our core mandate, and that's why for us this is very important. I will share now my screen. Just give me a second, please. So why the International Network on Fertilizer Analysis? Basically, as I said, we have quite a number of global challenges. And every day, especially during the celebration of the World Soil Day that was on this past Saturday, we have heard a lot from different stakeholders about their, their objectives, their needs, etc. And then if I put it in the framework of the United Nations, of course, we have different conventions, one addressing land degradation, another one addressing the loss of biodiversity. Then we have the other one related to mitigation and adaptation. We have FAO dealing with food security and nutrition. Then we have others that are concerned about the ozone layer, they are also, um, concern about the water bodies, another one dealing with the environment. And then we have a commitment regarding the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals that are a commitment. To all of this, there is a central role of soils. Soils can play a very good role in supporting all of these global challenges. And I'm saying all this because when talking about soils, we know that they provide a number of key ecosystems services, including the provision of food, fiber, and of course, fuel. And for that, you need nutrients to make it happen. And of course, soils have the ability to provide with these nutrients. But in many cases, we need to also support the replenishment of these nutrients, especially after we have harvested, right? There are a number of nutrients that come or are available in nature, but there are others who require some external addition. And all of these are central to food security and soils there play a fundamental role. 
what we want to do is to make a wise use of these external inputs, okay? And for that, we have together with our member countries established the International Code of Conduct for the Sustainable Use and Management of Fertilizers. And there is a reason for this. In there, we want to focus in three main issues, the misuse, the underuse, and the overuse of these fertilizers, no matter if they are synthetic or they are, bio, uh, let's say, produced by a biodiversity process, okay? What we want is that we make a wise and responsible use of fertilizers because we want to avoid pictures that you can see below. We want to avoid pollution. We want to avoid the soil degradation. We want to avoid the biodiversity loss. We want to also avoid that our water bodies are eutrophic type. We want to stop affecting the ozone layer. We want to reduce dramatically the emissions of greenhouse gases. We want to avoid an economical loss for farmers, and we want to avoid water and air pollution. So this code tries to do this. But in this code, we have stakeholders. Every stakeholder play a role, from the producer of these products till the user. And in between, we have regulatory frameworks that governments need to put in place we want, we need to have, see the trading system. We want to see who are the agro dealers and if they are well capacitated to do this job. We want to train farmers on how to use this product, et cetera. So as you can see, there, are, there, are, there is a, a, a role of responsibility for every sector and every stakeholder in this fertilizer chain. But we want to start from the beginning. And the beginning means that we need to ensure that a, a fertilizer is well produced and has sufficient quality to be used. And for this, of course, labeling is fundamental because the user needs to know what he is purchasing. That is fundamental. And then if he decides to buy it, he knows what he is obtaining, right? But in all this, there is a fundamental step, which is the assessment of the quality of these products. And for that, we need to have laboratories that are well equipped, equipped well trained, and that they are using standards that are comparable with other laboratories in any other country. So that's why we are launching IFA because Infa, because we want to make use of the successful framework that we have with the Global Soil Laboratory Network. We have, we have been working on Global Land and we have so that already this is a very good framework in which we can develop and harmonize processes uh, and protocols, etc. And we want to do the same with Infa. So as you can see, there is a very important number of reasons on why this network is very much needed. And to support this further, I will present the results of a survey in which many of you have been kind enough to participate. And the survey was about the fertilizer quality assessment, and I will show you the results, okay? So the questionnaire was available from April to December, 2020. We got more 168 replies from 65 countries. And the objective was to collect information about quality, how fertilizer quality is assessed worldwide in order to support the discussion that we will be having during these two days. These are the different stakeholders that uh, responded to the survey. You can see prominently that governing, government uh, institutions have been the majority in responding. We also had private sector research, farming association quite minimum, national, regional, or international organizations as well. 
The first question was, is the quality of fertilizers assessed in your country? And the majority responded, yes, for all types of fertilizers and amendments. Then there is a significant part that said that not at all, and they would like to have competency to analyze fertilizers and amendment quality. Is the assessment of fertilizers quality regulated by law in your country? The majority responded yes, and also a significant part responded that no. And that's indeed something very important because we really need to advocate for those countries to have a regulatory system for all the fertilizer chain because that's very important. That's how those are the rules, the rules of the game. So that's very much needed. Against what standards is fertilizer quality assessed? The majority responded that they have nationally developed standards. But also significantly, they said that we trust fertilizers level. Thus, we rely on the standards of the industry. So that's very important that this a stakeholder is aware that many people rely on them. So that's very important. Also, they said that they use the standards developed by international association other than the Fertilizer Institute. In some cases, in green, you see that Fertilizer Institute standards are also used. About the survey results, the information on the association organization responsible for standards in each country were also collected together with information on the laboratories officially appointed by the government to make fertilizer quality assessment analysis. This information is available in the INFA website. Are you a member of any regional or international association working or debating on fertilizer quality assessment? And this is a bold response. The answer is no. Therefore, in these times where we have all the means to be communicated and to be debating about topics in a neutral place, INFA indeed constitutes this neutral framework in which we can discuss openly this topic. Do you think that global standards on fertilizer quality assessment are needed? Well, almost 100% says yes. Survey results the, about the next question. Do you think that regional standards on fertilizers quality assessment would work better than global ones? And here we have, yes, almost half, half, but the, a bit is yes. And then we also have no. And the message here is that global standards can be taken as reference, and that's always the case for many different issues. So we have global standards, and then the, the regions and countries use them to adopt them and to have their own, which is a normal process. But definitely, they need to have a reference, and this reference should be a global one. If global standards on fertilizer quality assessment would be made available for free, would you adopt them? The majority says yes. And some said no. Why? Because it depends on the government, because it depends on the decision of the National Standard Office. It depends if the method the standard is well investigated. We need to test it first. The method standard needs to be adopted to national conditions. There are already regional standards available. It is not a point of having a standard, but to have the equipment and the training staff to do the analysis. National standards are preferred. So in here, well, the majority says that they, they, they will follow this or adopt these global standards. So that is clear, but it is very important to take into account all these other points. And in here with the Global Soil Laboratory Network, of course, we are also looking at the equipment and especially developing the capacities because we want to have trained staff or laboratories everywhere at the same level so that this is not an excuse or an issue. And equipment, of course, that is taken. Uh, and definitely we support also that national, national standards are preferred, but they need to be linked up to a global one. 
so that the interoperability, comparability are fundamental. What could be the limitations to the adoption of global or regional standards at national level? The majority said that the limitations for adoption of these global or regional standards is national legislation should be revised in function of global regional standards. Then the second one is that laboratories working on fertilizer quality control will show little interest in changing the laboratory procedures and global regional standards will not be trusted. Okay, that's the minimum. But the other two points are fundamental. And I think that if we are strong enough in making very reasonable and science-based evidence standards, I don't think there will be some, uh, let's say, um, negative aspects in order to adopt these global standards. But of course, if they have countries have national legislations, and if they see that there could be improved, maybe we can try to advocate for it. And of course, laboratories, if you are doing already one method, you feel comfortable, but we need to move with change with this theory of change because we need to be dynamic and always improving and enhancing. And if these global standards will give you that opportunity, I don't see why this should not happen. Can you please tell us on what type of fertilizer quality controls are performed? The, the majority responded mineral fertilizers. The second group was organic fertilizers and amendment improvements like manure, slurry, substrate, saprot, and compost. Then we had liquid fertilizers, foliar fertilizers, and biofertilizers. Do you think that the capability to assess the quality of fertilizers quality needs to be improved in your country at national, on a national level? And the majority responded, yes. Therefore, this is a reassurance that we need to focus on improving capacities. How to make this happen? Did you, you saw that there, are, there is a lot of uh, room for improving and making things better. So how to make this happen? Their preference is capacity development, meaning in terms of training and equipment, raising awareness on the topic. And I can tell you that nowadays there is a lot of attention and concern about these issues. Just look at the different message coming on from stakeholders and especially the UN secretary pushing to governments to take action because the issues related to our uh, environment and natural resources is really at the border. So there is a lot of pressure in this. Increased controls on fertilizers, quality laboratory inspections followed by the provision of recommendations and plant tissue testing. More efficient value change, marketing change. Harmonization of a standard operating procedures with the specific mention to some regional requirements. Development of fast, simple, but accurate test methods, improve legislative frameworks, proficiency test by allowing local laboratories to test fertilizers. This would allow to check whether fertilizer quality changes during transportation and distribution. So all these are really very important aspects that should pave the way forward on the focus that this network should have. And when talking about improved legislative frameworks, I can tell you that we have, we are working also in soil legs, which is a database of legal, legal frameworks on soils. And definitely all this is lying on there. And there is a working group that is trying to support countries in developing different uh, soil legislative frameworks. So we can support you from this side as well in this part. If you, do not, if you do not think that the capability to assess the quality of fertilizer quality needs to be improved in your country on a national level, can you please tell us why? And the majority said that regional bodies should take care of assessing the quality of fertilizers. And the second one, national capacities on fertilizers quality assessment are sufficient. So with all these inputs, I hope I convince you that with evidence, of course, it's not mine, but it's the evidence of all of you responding that there is a need for infant 
So we are very glad to launch and establish INFA, but only INFA will be successful with all your commitment and hard work. So we really hope you will be working with us together and we will make it, be making a contribution in this important sector. Thanks for your attention. Many, many thanks, Ronald, for your presentation. I remind participants that they can interact with the speakers anytime, either by writing in the chat or by raising um, their, your hands. You have a control uh, next to your to your icon now, where you can see your your name and face, where it says like raise hand. So please uh, um, write in the chat or raise your hand. Um, is there any question for Ronald? Well, I've been answering some question in the chat already. I will check on the countries that said that we're not list that answered the survey, but we're not listed in there in the presentation of Ronald. Please let me know if uh, there is any other country uh, um, beside the Lebanon and Hungary that could not find uh, their name in the, in the list of countries that answer the, the survey. We will write a short report on these survey results and we will make it available on the INFA website that uh, we will establish. Actually, we, we set it up, but we have to populate it with information and we will do it right after the, the meeting. Uh, I see a hands up. So Saud from Oman, um, please unmute yourself. Thank you very much, Pekoraiza. Uh, I'm just asking, not the question actually, okay. <clears throat> is it possible to ask for a uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, focal point for this uh, INFA here from Oman, or uh, is it possible to add a national focal point for uh, this uh, platform? Actually, what uh, I've been doing over the, these months has been to ask uh, countries to tell me who is, uh, what laboratories, what institute is officially in charge to do the regulation and analysis of fertilizers. So I've been preparing a database that uh, we also aim to finalize after this meeting and publish online. So in that sense, we will identify kind of focal points per each country. It doesn't mean that we will not work with other laboratories doing fertilizer analysis uh, in each country, but uh, as per Glossolan, we will have uh, a, a reference, no? like a laboratory that is strictly connected to the government so that we can also work on policy while working on the technical aspects of the matter. I hope this clarify, but after this meeting and also actually after tomorrow, this will be even more clear because tomorrow we will define the work plan. And my idea was to include this activity in the work plan. So the finalization of this database and then the publication, you know, in Glossolan, we always publish everything online so that everybody can have access to this information. Um, is there any other question or remark? Uh, if not, well, anyway, you, you can uh, keep on asking your question also on previous presentation in the chat. Uh, I would like now to give the, the floor to a colleague of mine, uh, Ms. Vinisa Sainese Santillan, so again from the Global Soil Partnership, that uh, will introduce us to the International Code of Conduct for the Use and Management of Fertilizers. So, Vinisa, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Lucrezia. Good morning. Afternoon and evening to everyone. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. So I will be presenting today an introduction to the International Code of Conduct for the Sustainable Use and Management of Fertilizers, and it's a very long name. So from this moment on, I will be referring to it only as the code. So as you probably all know, the code was launched last year as a tool for implementing the voluntary guidelines for sustainable soil management, but with special regard with some problems, including um, pollution, soil pollution, and of course, nutrient imbalance. Why? Because last century, we have observed a large increase in the production and use of fertilizers. And this has uh, come with environmental consequences. So fertilizers are a very important component of agri-food systems. And without them, the production of food on a massive scale for a growing population all over the world would not be possible. But this has come with consequences, especially environmental consequences, including 
and the most important, which are the um, modifications of global biogeochemical cycles, including not only nitrogen and phosphorus, but also sulfur and potassium. So this has come with environmental consequences, uh, harmful, including greenhouse gases emissions, mutant excess in soils, in water, heavy metal and contaminants, economic losses, water contamination, not just groundwater, but also coastal, coastal and aquatic ecosystems, contamination, air pollution, damage to human health and animal health, uh, soil degradation, and even low yields. So I would like to talk to you about two very quick examples about this uh, global modification of the cycles. In the case of nitrogen, it is very, very well documented um, that something that is uh, very well summarized in this phrase, too much of a good thing. And this means that something that is so beneficial for societies is also now, has also become a threat to our own survival and also to the survival of other species on the planet. Why? Because the increase of nitrogen inputs to soils through fertilizers has caused many uh, different and harmful environmental consequences, including not only the contamination of water because of the high concentration of nitrates, but also the emissions of greenhouse gases, like uh, especially nitrous oxide, and of course, even uh, biodiversity loss and damage to human and animal health. In the case of phosphorus, the main concern is that it's being mined. So this means the global, um, overall effect in this case is that we are moving phosphorus from the mines to the farming systems. So this is globally modifying this cycle. And unlike nitrogen, phosphorus is um, cannot be artificially synthesized. So this means it, it is a non-renewable natural resource. So it will be finished at some point, which means that we need to use it more efficiently. And the problem does not finish there because uh, in the case of phosphorus, their reserves are concentrated in less than five countries. So uh, these are just two examples of how um, how urgent is that uh, that need to use them to use fertilizers in a more efficient way. So with respect to soils, in the status of the world soil resources, which is a document launched by, by FAO and the GSP in 2015, this document ad identifies the ten main threats to soils which include, um, and more relevant for this meeting, nutrient imbalances, contamination, and acidification. So to tackle uh, these uh, 10 threats, um, the voluntary guidelines for sustainable soil management emerged, and then the code of fertilizers arise as a vehicle for the implementation for the voluntary guidelines for sustainable soil management. So what is the goal of the code? The goal the um, code aims at um, promoting the responsible and sustainable use of fertilizers to prevent misuse, underuse, and overuse, as Ronald already explained in the past presentation, but also to assist member countries to design policies and regula regulatory frameworks for the sustainable use uh, of fertilizers. The scope is to set out roles, responsibilities, and actions to different stakeholders, including uh, not just governments and the industry, of course, but also agricultural extension services and also research and academia. But definitely the most important target is farmers and end users. And then the um, code also includes sections with the production trade policy regulation and use of different type of materials. And of course, it includes the use of synthetic and mineral fertilizers, but other um, new sources that are being used more and more nowadays, like organic fertilizers, but also reused and recycled nutrients. So what are the issues that have been included? Uh, the, the issues, the main issues are uh, fertilizers underuse and overuse, but also misuse. This means other problems than quantity. And then also the problem of um, the price of fertilizers, which is very variable, and also problems of accessibility. Poor quality, which is very relevant for this meeting, and uh, how we are going to monitor this, the quality of fertilizers. 
And of course, the need for sustainable soil and nutrient management and different strategies to improve nitrogen, phosphorus, and other fertilizers use efficiency. The content, the, the code is uh, divided into these nine articles. Uh, so the um, content includes scope, goals, and objectives, terms, and definitions. Soil fertility and plant nutrition, fertility use and management, nutrient reuse and recycling, composition limits and testing, access, distribution and labeling, information extension and outreach, implementation, dissemination, use and evaluation. But particularly relevant for us today is the article number six, which includes the subjects of composition, limits and testing. So this article includes uh, this type of subjects which are relevant for us today which um, addresses subjects like uh, ensuring that fertilizers and sources of recycled nutrients are compliant with quality and safety standards, sampling as a government task, but also a joint work with the fertilizer industry and other stakeholders, and very important harmonization of fertilizer sampling and testing procedures, and international standards and best practices in terms of regulating the composition and the quality of fertilizers uh, taking into account new, the nutrient content, heavy metals, um, harmful microbes, uh, toxic materials, and also other additives that normally come with the fertilizers. And also, of course, set and regulate evidence-based safety standards, limits, and guidelines on harmful contents of fertilizers. Products specify relevant methods to analyze fertilizers, nutrient content, and bioavailability, bioavailability for crops. Sorry and through different relevant national um, institution extension, like extension and research. Um, and they should also address the health and safety aspect related to fertilizers composition. Also the field testing of fertilizers for the efficacy, their actual efficacy in the field. And then appropriate testing for, for uh, recycled nutrient sources and of course education, not just to um, stakeholders, but also the fertilizers users and society in general. Then I would like to emphasize that the fertilizer code is a living product. This means that um, the fertilizer code will be uh, updated every five or 10 years or even before is, if it is necessary or uh, appropriate. Then the implementation, um, the countries asked and assistant with this uh, type of issues, for example, registration and regulation system for fertilizers, availability of quality fertilizers in underserved areas, fertilizer quality control, which is the term, the, the subject that um, is important for us today, but also policy formulation and capacity development. This means that the code is uh, aimed to close the gaps in these um, knowledge areas. Then I have here an example of the implementation activities that we've had in Latin America, uh, which include, of course, first to identify the institutional stakeholders that will be relevant for us to help us to help us to implement the code, then to generate a map of these possible stakeholders to help us to implement the code. And then, um, of course, we will be um, organizing webinars and workshops to address specific needs according to every region. And then examples, for example, um, this we will address this type of issues, market for organic fertilizers, legal framework in different countries, quality analysis of fertilizers. So they emphasize in Latin America, this is very important and this is um, a need that uh, countries in Latin America have. And of course, for us, it is very important, the interaction with INFA. And this was um, set out in that um, uh, meeting. And of course, the implementation of the Soil Doctors Program in, in Latin America. Then I would like to talk to you very briefly about the relevance of the code and INFA in this perfect storm scenario that many countries are getting through now. Why? Because countries need fertilizers and although they need them, they are importing them. So most countries do not produce the fertilizer they need. They probably are importing 80 or 90% of the fertilizers they need. Of course, this is very variable, but uh, um, on top of this, they don't have food security. 
and also they are importing them, the countries normally are not using the, the fertilizers in an efficient way. So this means harmful environmental effects and damage to human uh, and animal health. And another example of the relevance that this network could have is that yesterday we had this nitrogen challenges in agri-food systems uh, event, health nitrogen waste by 2030. And then immediately people started asking this type of questions, like what is the minimum requirement of nitrogen to qualify a natural bioproduct as a fertilizer? Is there any standard set by FAO? And how to standardize nutrient inputs from organic fertilizers? So these are random questions that people just raised during the event. And I think this is the type of uh, issues that the network together with the code could be addressing. And that's it for my part, Lucrecia. Many, many thanks, Viniza. It was very interesting. Also, uh, this is what the participants expressed in the chat. Again, I would like to ask if there is any question on the fertilizer code. Again, either by raising your hand, asking for the floor, or writing in the chat. Viniza is open for questions. She will be with us until tomorrow. So tomorrow she will be with us still. And actually she will help me um, coordinate in the network because uh, fertilizer is a area of work. So please don't hesitate to contact her or ask her question already. Otherwise, I would move to the next item in the agenda, that is the introduction to the Global Soil Laboratory Network. Um, this presentation should be given by the chair of uh, Glossolan, Ms. Nobane Suvanang. Unfortunately, she wrote me that she's stuck in the traffic, in the traffic jam of Bangkok. So she cannot uh, connect now. So I will give the presentation on, uh, on her behalf. Just uh, allow me to share my screen. And uh, I will start. So as mentioned, this is a presentation on the Global Soil Laboratory Network, a network that was established in November 2017 to strengthen the performance of laboratories through the use of standardized methods and protocols and to harmonize soil analysis methods so that soil information would be comparable and interpretable across laboratories, countries, and regions. Ultimately, our aspiration for we hope a uh, near future is to provide the certification for technical competencies in uh, laboratory analysis. At present, we work on th in three ma major areas of work. The first one regards quality assurance and quality control. So basically we prepare a lot of uh, training material on the execution of internal and external quality control and organize proficiency testing. So we really organize uh, and execute external quality controls at the regional and global level. But still we are promoting the execution of these proficiency testing at the national level. The second area of work is the, the one regarding methods. So we are harmonizing standard operating procedures and we are training laboratories and countries on the implementation of these SOPs. Still, we organize training on health and safety, which is something that should not be overlooked in the laboratory. Uh, the health of laboratory staff should come first. And uh, ultimately, uh, looking at equipment, we train laboratories on the use, maintenance, and purchasing of laboratory equipment. We established a donation bartering system so that countries that are actually laboratories that dismiss some still functioning equipment can donate it or barter it to, with, with other laboratories. And still under the component of equipment, we launched an initiative on soil spectroscopy. So we are working on wet and dry chemistry at the same time. But why we established Glossolan? Well, I already told you something when, uh, when I mentioned the objectives of the network, but uh, really we think that investing in more efficient laboratories and harmonized data has national, regional and global implication. So Glossolan is an effective way to provide reliable evidence to support be better decision-making at both field and policy levels support countries in reporting on progress made towards the sustainable development goals, contribute to the development of international standards and indicators, 
and uh, still contribute to the assessment, monitoring, and sustainable management of soil. There is a, a strong link between laboratories and the provision of data. No, this is what we mentioned. And so there is also a connection between laboratories and the establishment of national soil laboratory, uh, national soil information systems. Sorry. And ultimately, if we look a bit outside the, the uh, laboratory space, our work really can assist companies manufacturing laboratory equipment in improving their products and identify research gaps uh, and at the same time increase investment in research. At present, the, the network has over 600 laboratory registered. Here you see the um, uh, basically the number of laboratories we have registered in each uh, region because Glossolan is organized in region and I will show you about it in a while. Uh, and here you have a graph showing you the growth of the network over time. So you see that uh, uh, in 2020, we have an exponential growth of, of the network. And this is because we started really to push towards the establishment of uh, the national soil laboratory networks. But at the same time, actually one of the good things of uh, COVID-19 is that uh, we were able to reach a larger number of, uh, of laboratories no, in terms of trainings and meetings. So many more people could join our events and this led to a growth in, uh, in the number of laboratories registered in Glossolan. Here I would like to show you some of the technical support partners we have in Glossolan. And, uh, and this is to tell you that Glossolan does not mean to ring them the wheel but to be a catalyzer. So only by joining efforts, we can make a difference and make better use of the financial and human resources available. So we aim to work all together with the, with the associations, with the initiatives, with, the, with organizations, with whoever is already working on the topic so that we join efforts and not indeed reinvent the wheel. Um, I mentioned before that um, the, um, I'm sorry, I lost the presentation. Uh, okay, I told you before that Glossolan works in regions. So we are organized actually in six uh, regional soil laboratory networks. AfriLab for Africa, Eurozolan for Europe and Eurasia, NinaLab for the Near East and North Africa, ASPAC for the Pacific, SealNet for Asia, and Latsolan for Latin America and the Caribbean. And then the ultimate level of organization of the network is that of the National Soil Laboratory Networks. Now, who has to establish these National Soil Laboratory Networks? Well, the mandate and the responsibility to, um, to establish these, uh, these networks is given to the national reference laboratories that are identified and appointed by the national focal point to the global soil partnership. But why we need of these national networks? Well, to support the implementation of Glossolan activities at the local level, to bring local challenges to the attention of Glossolan that will help and actually will develop strategies to address uh, these, uh, these challenges and to reach and support a larger number of laboratories. Now I showed you in the graph that since we started to work on the establishment of this national network, the number of laboratory registered in Glossolan increased. The main task of uh, these national networks would be that of facilitating the implementation of Glossolan activities, advertise Glossolan activities and events, meaning that we don't want to become famous, but we want people actually to join our events that uh, are really about training so that uh, more laboratories can benefit from the initiative. Then organize national trainings and meetings in order to, well, to transfer the knowledge and skills acquired in Glossolan and in the regional soil laboratory networks to other laboratories, discuss, discuss common challenges and needs, explore financial resources mobilization opportunities, and ultimately, we kindly ask the national soil laboratory networks to organize national proficiency testing exercise so that many we can test the proficiency in soil analysis of many more laboratories that we can do at the global and regional level. Here, I would just like to show you some of the main achievements of Glossolan since its establishment. 
So as mentioned before, we established six uh, regional soil laboratory networks. We organize the annual trainings on internal and external quality control, health and safety, procurement of laboratory equipment, and use and maintenance of laboratory equipment. And we do this, for example, this last point, we do it together with the manufacturers. We invite manufacturers to give the trainings on the use and maintenance of laboratory equipment. And ultimately, we organize regional and global proficiency testing. So in 2018, we organized the two regional proficiency tests, one for Asia and one for Latin America. In 2019, we organized a global proficiency test. And unfortunately, because of COVID-19 in 2020, we had to cancel the global proficiency test, but we hope to catch up next year to, so to organize another one in 2021. Based on the results of the proficiency test we organized in 2019, Glossolan is providing equipment to 20 laboratories in 20 countries. Glossolan aims to invest in training first and then on equipment. So laboratory that showed a good performance in soil analysis were, let's say, rewarded with some equipment. Still uh, remaining in the area of the proficiency testing, um, we achieved to get a resolution on the interna international exchange of soil samples for research purposes under the Global Soil Laboratory Network to be approved by the 27th Committee on Agriculture uh, in 2020. So basically, what does it mean that uh, we are looking for having a simplified uh, custom control procedure for the ex international exchange of uh, soil samples, and we should get it uh, through this resolution. In June 2020, we launched the first ever global customs control procedure database called the SIMPLE, that means soil import legislation, and it's available on this uh, link, uh, at this link. This is just an overview of how the, the database looks like. So there is a brief introduction with also some warnings. So points for the kind of attention of users. You see here, there is a drop-down menu over here in which you can select the country of interest. And once you select your country of interest, you get the following information. So the documents needed by the customs, uh, country-specific remarks, and additional information that eventually bring you to the official website of the customs. In April 2020, we launched the Glossolan program on soil spectroscopy. And on, uh, in September 2020, we had the first plenary meeting on soil spectroscopy with 350 participants from 63 countries. That really led to the definition of uh, an annual work plan on soil spectroscopy that we are currently implementing. Still, we talk about methods. So in 2019, we, we were successful in publishing five standard operating procedures, which were mostly on carbon because we gave priority to this soil parameter. Uh, but uh, this year, actually by the end of this year, we will publish other 11 standard operating procedure on nitrogen, phosphorus, pH, electrical conductivities, and much more. And we will continue this work over the year, of course. In terms of uh, training, we published a lot of training and awareness raising material. Here you can see some examples. And still we are translating the Glossolan website and all Glossolan material, at least into the six UN languages. But we translate it in all the languages we get uh, translators uh, uh, volunteering for. Now, this was just a quick recap of our main achievements to tell you that the appreciation for the work done by Glossolan since its establishment was such that Glossolan members and partners asked the network to also look into the analysis of fertilizer quality. So thereafter, the idea to establish the International Network on Fertilizer Analysis was, uh, was launched. Uh, as mentioned at the beginning of this meeting, INFA will operate under the umbrella of Glossolan, and uh, we would like it to stand to the Glossolan principles. And, um, and so basically uh, by being a sub-network of Glossolan, we would also like INFA to focus its, its attention on what happens within fertilizers laboratories. I mentioned the Glossolan principles that actually also bring us to the, to the end of this presentation. 
because we really believe that everybody matters. So we wish for all Infa members to, to play an active role in the network because for us, they really like their opinion counts a lot. Uh, the second principle is that together we are stronger. So when possible, it is important to develop common strategies and work plans at different scales. So national, regional and, and global, because these will also make it easier to help each other. And we would like ultimately to create a tendency. So the main goal of Inf activity should be that to build the capacity of all its member laboratories. We don't aim to have some champion labs we would like to really build the capacity of all the, the labs registering to the network. So thank you very much. Uh, this was the presentation on Glossolan that I gave on behalf of, uh, of its chair, Ms. Nopmane Suvanang, that also bring, um, brings uh, you her greetings. Is there any question on uh, Glossolan? It was very quick. I'm sorry, I also try to catch up on the time because we are a bit late on the agenda. Yeah. Uh, again, if there is any question, please ask me in the, in the chat or just by raising your hand. I know that many of you are already member of Glowstone, so you should, you should know about it already. Okay, I don't see hands up, so maybe I would like to give the floor to Mr. Ronald Vargas now for moderating the panel discussion. We have some distinguished guests today. So Ronald, I give you the floor and let you do the moderation. Thank you very much, Lucrezia. So we have a number of distinguished colleagues who will be part of this moderation of this session in which we will try to, to understand the different angles of different stakeholders. So we will have Ms. Theodora Nicola, Nicola Copulu from the European Commission. Sorry for my, my spelling it, or reading. It was perfect. Hello, okay, everyone. thank you. Then we have Mr. Geoff Fujis research scientist from the International Fertilizer Development Center. We have, I suppose, Engineer Bello, Director of Farm Input Support Services from the Federal Ministry of Agriculture from Nigeria. Thank you. Ms. Landinka Angria and Ms. Lenita Herawati from the Indonesian Soil Research Institute. Welcome. Ms. Alexandra Veresa Estakwiak from the Baltic Control Laboratory. Mr. Alexander Sharavaiko, the Deputy CEO from Fosagro. Welcome. Mr. Hugh Rodriguez from Thornton Laboratories, United States of America. So they are our distinguished panelists today. And of course, we want to hear and listen from them about their, uh, their perspective regarding uh, fertilizer quality assessment. I will start with uh, specific questions for each of them, of course. And then if you have questions on the chat, I will try to see given the, the time that we have, we can also include them. So I will start with Ms. Theodora from the European Commission, whose work is on the implementation of new regulation on fertilizer pro fertilizing products. And also she follows a number of other activities. So Ms. Theodora, I'm just calling you like this so that- yes. Yes. I don't challenge myself again. So apologies for that. Could you please tell us what are the, latest, the latest regulations on fertilizers that the European Commission is currently working on? What are the major issues on the topic that the commission is facing? Yes, uh, with pleasure. So um, for the moment, uh, there is uh, the current regulation on fertilizers. 
which is covering uh, a number of products, uh, mainly in organic fertilizers, some liming materials and some uh, inhibitors. But because of the need to cover a, a big uh, variety of products that uh, were not under the scope of this current regulation, uh, the new fertilizing products regulation uh, was adopted uh, last year. And uh, in this new regulation, uh, we cover products uh, as uh, starting from inorganic fertilizers, but also going to organic fertilizers, um, a lot of, uh, of which uh, uh, also for the inorganic part, a, a lot of which are, are coming from waste streams. So they, we have recovered nutrients covered. Compost digestates are part of the materials used. Uh, we also go to liming materials, uh, soil improvers, growing media, even plant biostimulants, which were never covered uh, in Europe in a harmonized way. So the, um, this new uh, fertilizing products regulation puts uh, several um, quality requirements, but also safety requirements. Uh, so for a, every um, part of the, so for every group of, uh, of products, there are specific uh, um, uh, quality requirements, um, meaning uh, in most cases, uh, uh, content of nutrients, in some other cases, also solubility of uh, nutrients, um, uh, specific parameters, uh, so specific values for uh, electrical conductivity and things like this. But also the, the regulation covers also uh, uh, safety uh, aspects. Uh, it relies a lot on the rich regulation and the rich registration of the materials, a lot of the substances that are used in the production of fertilizers, fertilizing products, but also sets specific limit values for heavy metals, for instance, for pathogens, uh, for other impurities such as plastics, uh, metals, uh, um, other um, organic uh, contaminants that may be part of the final uh, composition of a fertilizing uh, product. Uh, in cases uh, where uh, animal byproducts, derived products from animal byproducts are used in the recovering of uh, nutrients, um, we base uh, all the safety aspects on the animal byproduct regulation. So every time uh, where safety issues are there, um, other legislation will definitely apply in parallel. Uh, the big challenge, so, so the, the, the main requirements are there, but the big challenge were the methods and methods for analyzing all these requirements are not set in the regulation. Uh, so so this is why we, the Commission adopted a big standardization request, uh, which was addressed uh, to SEN, to the European uh, standardization uh, uh, body, organization that we have in Europe, and they, are start, they have started working already. We have three technical committees uh, working on uh, harmonized methods for assessing the requirements, meaning uh, nutrients contents to pathogens and uh, safety um, parameters such as heavy metals uh, limit values, for instance. So this is this is a big challenge, and uh, we are we are working we are following the work of, of the experts. And every time, uh, whatever we we discuss, whatever we work on, whatever we plan, uh, we always consult uh, uh, publicly um, interested uh, um, bodies. So we have a commission expert group. We, uh, member states are part of this group. Uh, industry uh, stakeholders and um, non-government organization are there, NGOs. And every time we consult them and we take uh, into consideration all their input uh, concerns uh, and recommendations. In a nutshell, this is uh, what we do. Thank you very much, very informative. And of course, it is always good to have a regional body like yours to, for, to, to take a look to all these issues. We hope we, every region will have some uh, body like this, but it is not the case. So we are really happy that you share all this with us. And I will complement a question from the chat, but very quickly, if you can tell us very quickly, yeah. They are asking, what about biofertilizers, new regulation? 
because that that has been all we receive quite a lot of uh, requests on this biofertilizer if there is regulation standards etc what is the case on the in the eu I guess that, that when they refer to biofertilizers, they mean what uh, we refer to the regulation as plant biostimulants. So all the, uh, uh, or, or if, if it's not the case, uh, maybe they, they could uh, clarify. So uh, there is the, the framework is there. Um, in order to call a product uh, a plant biostimulant, you have uh, to claim one of the functions that are uh, there, uh, like uh, increase the, the, the use of, of nutrients, for instance. And then in order to prove that you fulfill the, the claim, that you fulfill what the regulation uh, says, then you have to follow a standard which is under development. So SEN is developing also standards for the claims uh, that the, bio, the, the plant biostimulants will, uh, will, uh, will have as, as, a, as a, um, a labeling uh, claim. But okay. I, don't, I don't know if that was the, the initial question, to be honest, because we don't use this term in, uh, in the new in the fertilizing uh, regulation. Okay, that, that's, that's clear. And of course, I think that I will revert to, to all of you again with this, because this, this name biofertilizer is becoming recently quite common. And that's exactly one of the points that we need to clarify. What are we referring to by biofertilizers? So we will, uh, I will address this in the next round. Thank you very much. Now, I would like to ask a question to uh, Mr. Job Fujis. Is he present? We cannot find him in the list of participants, but if he registered under another name, maybe he can raise his hand and let us know and we give him the floor. Otherwise, uh, my suggestion is that we move to the next panelist. Meanwhile, that we try to, to contact Mr. Uh, Fujice. That's fine. Thank you, Lucrezia. So I will move then to Engineer Bello, from, Director of Farm Input and Support Services from the Nigerian Federal Ministry of Agriculture. Uh, he has experience uh, in this topic and we will profit from there. Hello, Mr. Engineer Biello, can you please tell us what type of work does the Department of Farm Input Support Hello. Services do? For example, is it involved in the development of national policies? Does it analyze imported fertilizers? Do you have a role in the quality assessment of locally produced fertilizers too? and how to promote the local production of fertilizers with raw material available in the country. Ingenier Bello, the floor is yours. I think he just lost the connection because he just disappeared from the screen. <laughs> we are very unlucky today. Oh, oh yeah, he's, yeah he's here back. is back. Ingenier Bello, did you, did you get our question? You are mute, sir. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Oh my God. Please go ahead, we can hear you. Maybe you can unmute. Yes, Mr. Bello. Can you hear us? Yes. Can you hear me, please? Yes, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Do you did you listen to our question or I repeat it? Please repeat it because I lost I lost out. Okay, could you please tell us what type of work does the Department of Farm Input Support Services do? For example, is it involved in the development of national policies? Does it analyze imported fertilizers? Or do you have a role in the quality assessment of locally produced fertilizers too? Oh, thank you very much. Um, 
farm input support services of the federal government of Nigeria uh, is, is a department under the Federal Ministry of Agric. And we are mainly, uh, we guarantee the supply of high quality fertilizers, uh, both organic and inorganic, and other agricultural inputs in the country in accordance to the uh, required standards, which had been set by the body that we call the uh, National Fertilizer Technical Committee. And uh, this body, it's also, uh, it's like it, the body that ensures that the quality, I mean, the standards are set for fertilizer usage in the country. Um, we also formulate as a department, we formulate policies and uh, regulatory framework on fertilizer and other agricultural uh, inputs for the countries, uh, for the country. And we usually do this in collaboration with the Kowa subregion and other uh, D8 countries, because Nigeria is a member of the D8 countries. We also regulate uh, fertilizers and uh, agrochemicals qualities standards in the country in accordance to, uh, like I said, in accordance to the uh, National Fertilizer Quality Control Act, because in Nigeria, the president have just signed into law the National Fertilizer Quality Control Act and its regulation. And um, this, is this, this is to ensure that quality fertilizer are uh, 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 at the right quantity and at the right quality are made available to farmers across the country. We also, uh, and, and for us to do this, we, we require uh, a lot of uh, analysis. We do a lot of analysis because part of the job we need to do to ensure quality control is to, is to test the fertilizer that is being produced by the, uh, by the blenders to make sure that they conform to the required uh, standard. And to do this, we do this in the, in, the, in the laboratories. We have laboratories across the country. We have them in uh, geo agro, uh, agro zones. We have like five agro zones and we have, this, we have uh, laboratories in these zones to ensure that we, we carry out some of these tests. We also do field analysis of some of these fertilizers when they are produced to ensure that they are, we do field trials uh, on pilot uh, basis. And we usually do this in collaboration with uh, research institutes across the country to make sure, especially when the fertilizers are new fertilizers, especially when they're imported or, and they're new to us. And the one that I also locally produced by our own uh, companies in Nigeria. We make sure that we do field trials to ensure that these, uh, these are in conformity with what they claim they are. I, I would like to reiterate again, I mean, mention again that we provide uh, policy advocacy for fertilizers, including environmental impact assessments, because we need to be sure that, like as we said by one of the speakers, the fertilizer are used in the right quantity and they don't have any major impact on our, on our environment. Um, when we do our analysis in Nigeria, we make sure that at least we use a, a minimum of two, two uh, laboratories to confirm that the data we are getting are the same. And this is an area where we believe that as a nation, we are going to be requiring some assistance to make sure that whatever, because this Fertilizer Act is a new thing that has just been done in Nigeria. It was, it was signed into law last year, October, and it is in this, uh, it, it was just last week that, uh, that is about a week ago, that the regulation was signed by the, uh, by the Minister of Agro which means that we are, the implementation of this act is a new thing, which is what we are just started uh, to, to, uh, to, to work on, I mean, to, um, to begin to implement. So, the, we, which means that uh, we will be needing very good fertilizer laboratories. We have some across the country, which we've been working with, but we need to upgrade them to the, because the, a lot of them are using old systems which is why uh, we are excited to be a member of, I mean, to, uh, to join this particular network of analysis. We are also making sure that the method of analysis that we'll be using to try this, I mean, to, 
uh, analyze this fertilizer are the same method. So we are harmonizing the method, meeting together to make sure that we develop an harmonized method to use for the uh, for testing uh, this fertilizer. Um, you asked, I, I don't know, maybe I've been able to cover some of the questions you asked, but locally we, we, we have raw materials that we use for our fertilizer. We also make sure we test these local materials that we use for the blending of the fertilizer to be sure that they are the right materials for, for use. Thank you. I think I'll stop at this point in case there are. Yes. Thank you very much. Very informative to understand that, to know also that you have a new fertilizer act and that it has entered into regulation and, in, and into activity now. So very important and very, very informative uh, information so that we can understand what a country like Nigeria is doing in this. Next, I will invite uh, Ms. Linka Angria and Ms. Lenita Herawote from the Indonesian Soil Research Institute. And I will ask them the following question. Uh, could you please tell us what standards and methods you use in your country to do the fertilizers quality analysis? I mean, if you have a standards like ISO, the ones from IFA, et cetera. In Indonesia, uh, we have a standard uh, and method used for fertilizer analysis is one uh, in organic, for organic uh, fertilizer, uh, Indonesia use uh, the nation, Indonesian national standard and we call it SNI. And regulation of the Minister of Agriculture, uh, we call Permentan. Uh, and for organic fertilizer, also Indonesia use uh, standard national, Indonesian national standard uh, and regulation uh, of Minister of Agriculture. And we have biology fertilizer. Uh, they use uh, regulation of Minister of Agriculture. So in Indonesia, we have two regulation, SNI and Permentan. Okay, thank you. So it means you have your national regulation and you follow those standards. Now, to complement the question, one of the challenges related to fertilizer quality is that their nutrient content can change over time due to different aspects, including uh, the, 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 the climate, the weather. How is Indonesia dealing with this issue? Do you have any con quality control chain from your laboratory to the final user? Okay, thank you. I will try to answer the uh, question number two. Uh, in Indonesia, we have two types of fertilizer. The first, we have subsidized fertilizer, and then the second is non-subsidized fertilizer. For the subsidized fertilizer, the sample are taken by the fertilizer sampling officer who has the certificate, and then uh, fertilizer are tested in the laboratory uh, if the result uh, pass the national standard in Indonesia, and then uh, the government will distribute to the farmer. And then for the non-subsidized fertilizer, sample are tested in the laboratory, uh, and we have a supervision of the quality of, uh, of fertilizer by the Director General Agriculture Facility and Means. And then uh, they distribute uh, to the farmer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very clear. So you have national legislation and you have also the standards. And then you also take care of the issues related to fertilizer quality in both subsidized and non-subsidized fertilizers. Thank you. Very informative. Now I would like to ask Miss Alexandra Beresa start. Stachowiak from the Baltic Control Laboratory, which is one of the major service provider assessing the quality of fertilizers for for our for SAO. So, so can can you please tell us what are, what standard methods do you use for the analy analysis of fertilizers quality, and how could 
the chemical analysis be decentralized and done locally and meet international standards? What is your advice on all this? Ms. Alexandra, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. <laughs> ah, okay, I see you now. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm here. Uh, so um, just to clarify, we are the inspection company, uh, which is dealing with inspections of fertilizer for FAO uh, uh, around the, the globe, in fact. Our job is mainly to proceed with inspections, uh, which are the pre-shipment inspection, where we check visually uh, the quality um, of the cargo. We check the quantity, the origin, the lot numbers, and the labelings. And also we uh, make uh, the so-called visual evaluation of the cargo, which means that we are checking the color, the smell and the general uh, condition, whether the, um, the fertilizer is, for instance, caking or moldy uh, and so on. Uh, later on, we proceed with the loading supervisions where we are responsible to check whether the exact quantities are loaded and also to check whether the containers or trucks or other means of transport are uh, appropriately um, prepared for the, for the transportations. Then uh, when asked by FAO, we're also proceeding with the unloading inspections where we check the same, I mean, the quantity, the quality of the cargo. And what is the most important, we are asked to draw the samples. And what we are doing is that we are sending them to uh, the laboratories we are cooperating with. And uh, the laboratories are checking the parameters which are asked by FAO to be verified. So once uh, the samples reach the laboratory, they are registered there and they are getting the unique name so that uh, nobody knows where the sample comes from so that all the details are kept confidential. And the most uh, common parameters that, uh, that we are checking uh, is the moisture, because it is very important. As, uh, as you know, that um, there are two forms of water present in fertilizers, which is absorbed and absorbed water. And while um, correct while checking the moisture, there are some special methods at labs to verify it. Um, and another point that we are checking is the particle size, which is also done by the laboratory, uh, where we are checking uh, whether the fertilizers meet the requirements. Later on, we are checking also some chemical parameters. But here I, I will not you know, bore you with, with all the methods that laboratories are using because they, these are very specific and long going processes. And um, coming back to your questions, whether the chemical analysis can be decentralized, uh, we do think that from our point of view, it would um, fasten, faster the process of obtaining the analysis because now when we are having an inspection somewhere, for instance, in Africa, and we are sending the samples um, to United Arab Emirates, where we have the laboratory that we are cooperating with, it is time consuming indeed, because the parcel needs to reach uh, the laboratory. And what we think that if the laboratories on the ground uh, are well equipped and having well-trained staff, we would be able to provide the results much faster. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very interesting to know all this procedure of inspection in the quality of, of the cargo that you are sending. And of course, very clearly 
uh, having local laboratories analyzing this and having these facilities is something that we really need to maybe advocate for. Thanks a lot. That was really informative. Um, now I will kindly ask Mr. Alexander Sharabaiko, the deputy CEO of Osago, which is a fertilizer company from Russia, uh, to, to tell us about the following. Which methods, standards does Fosagro use for the assessment of fertilizer quality? Uh, and also I related to that, and we would like to know if Fosagro would support the work of INFA on the development of harmonized methods to assess the quality of fertilizer and implement these methods too. Please. Mr. Sharabaiko, floor is yours. Uh, dear Ronald, thanks a lot for inviting first off and dear participants, uh, thank you for having us today at this um, uh, esteemed uh, discussion. Uh, I'm very much pleased to represent uh, our company Fosagro, which is the fourth largest uh, producer of phosphate fertilizers in the world. Uh, myself, uh, I'm uh, chief financial officer and also head of international projects. But let me address the questions that uh, Ronald was previously asking uh, us. Uh, first off, the assessment of uh, fertilizer quality. I think it's it's a very important question, and you know we take a very close look at our product management and quality control. There are various stages that we take these uh, precautious measures. First off, it's production, storage, uh, transportation, and sales. At each stage, we we do have uh, special procedures. So the quality control service that we have in our com company carries out uh, monitoring of the usability of fertilizers. So they do the monitoring uh, exercises at Fosagro Enterprises, at production sites, and also uh, from time to time uh, at our end customer site. So uh, in terms of quality control, uh, especially for Fosagro mineral fertilizers, we, include, we actually divide it into various stages. We have inspection of incoming raw materials, as uh, one of the previous colleagues have mentioned. We have similar procedures. We have in-process inspections of production facilities. We have uh, monitoring of storages at our warehouses. And uh, moreover, we have testing of samples from shipments, which is done by our own Fosagro laboratories. And then quality control at the cargoes which also was mentioned previously. So we, we take this very seriously. To be frank with you, uh, quite a few C-level executives, they have KPIs, which is tied to the quality control. So if they have any problems with quality control, they are actually demotivated at that level. So our uh, product quality and uh, the management uh, of the uh, quality control at all stages of the product life cycle is certified. So we have uh, ISO uh, 9001, we have ISO 14001, we have GMP plus, and we are uh, doing it on annual basis. We're basically renewing these uh, uh, international standards. So in September 2020, which was just recently, we were certified again for compliance with the requirements of uh, International Fertilizer Association, which is called Protect and Sustain. It's actually a standard of EFA organization, and we have scored 97.8 out of 100 for the product quality management, which is a very high mark. Uh, I would also like to note that uh, Fosagro fertilizers are among the safest, safest in the world, and this is because of the nature of what we produce. We're producing our phosphate-based fertilizers from phosphate rock that contains the lowest cadmium levels that so far found on planet Earth. And in fact, it's like less than 10 milligrams per kilo of PTO5. And this indicator is specified in the new uh, national Russian standard for agricultural products, raw materials, and uh, environmentally friendly food products. So the national standard uh, was developed uh, in accordance with the decree of uh, the Russian president uh, last year, and it's actually called Green Standard. And it covers all environmentally friendly products. So, uh, as you can see, we are at the very front uh, of, of this of this movement. 
Fosagro, uh, as the company, exports to European Union, once, which was previously mentioned, and we are registered in accordance with uh, European Commission regulation, which is, if I remember correctly, nine, 1907, which is concerning the registration, evaluation, authorization, and restrictions on chemicals called so-called REACH. So all products are uh, properly classified. Uh, they are labeled, packaged uh, with accordance with EU standards. So that's all for the first part, I would say. The second part, I think it was more specific uh, towards the info participation. Um, as one of the world's leader, leading producer, we are fully aware of our responsibility for the food, food safety in the world. We effectively uh, supply into over 100 and over 100 countries in the world, and uh, this is uh, an important part of, of the fight against the hunger on the global scale. At the same time, uh, our, our priority remains the quality and environmental friendliness of fertilizers that we produce and we ship to our customers. So Fosagro has had a very successful working relationship with FAO for several years already. You, you Ronald, should probably know that better than me. Uh, the company is very strong supporter of all the initiatives uh, which are aimed at protection of the ec ecosystems. So we agree with efforts to promote safe fertilizers and we believe this will help to improve the quality of soils and the food uh, which is grown uh, using our fertilizers, our safe fertilizers. The uh, next step together with FAO, we are implementing Global Soil Doctors Program, which was partly mentioned today. The aim of this program is to develop the skills at the farmer levels. So it will basically help to enhance sustainable soil management and improve soil fertility, regardless of uh, your location. So we are also actively involved in supporting global soil laboratories, which was presented just before when I joined uh, this panel. A key component of this project is the creation of the regional networks of soil laboratories in various uh, places such as Africa, Latin America, Middle East. And the project main aim is to strengthen the uh, capacity of soil laboratories in developing countries which you know, I think it serves all to the best of uh, our world. The program also focuses on assessing the quality and safety of fertilizers that are supplied in specific countries. So we at Fosagro took uh, also part in the development of international code of uh, conduct uh, for sustainable use of uh, and management of uh, fertilizers. This code recommends the government set a limit on heavy metals uh, in fertilizers because it actually can harm the citizens' uh, health. So it suggests that the government should restrict the use of fertilizers that exceed limits because of the high likelihood of soil contamination and you know, health dangers. So we have already established a good working relationship with FAO, as I said before. The projects that we have supported so far aim to maintain and improve quality of soil and life. We also have very, uh, I would say, vast experience in the production of high quality and environmentally friendly fertilizers. So to answer your question, we are ready to continue cooperation with FAO and strongly support info work on standardizing methods for assessing fertilizer quality. So we hope to facilitate uh, the introduction of such methods at international levels. And we believe that only together fighting, uh, you know, close to our customers, we can fight the hunger and ensure that people will have access to quality food. That's all from my side, Ronald. Back to you. Thank you very much, Alexander. Very, very clear in terms of how Fosagro ensures quality of their products. It's good to learn those standards that you use. And of course, uh, Fosagro is, uh, financially supporting our some of our activities related to Glossolan and soil doctors. Of course, we are we appreciate that, and we hope also Infa can have such a support. Now, I will invite um, uh, our last uh, speaker, which is Mr. Hugh Hugh, 
Rodriguez from the Torton Laboratories of the United States of America. And in this occasion, he will be represented, representing the International Fertilizer Association, IFA. Mr. Rodriguez, welcome. And we would like to know if you could briefly describe how these standard operating procedures for fertilizers analyst quality are developed at IFA. And can you please tell us, are there harmonized operating procedures for the analysis of organic fertilizers from bio waste, fermentation, and composting? Mr. Rodriguez? Are you there? You are mute. Can you please unmute yourself? We cannot hear you. We cannot hear you still. Ronald, if I can make a suggestion, because I think it's a really a problem of setting of the computer of Mr. Rodriguez. Yes, um, please. The next item in the agenda is an open discussion. So I'm actually posting the question that we are posing to Mr. Rodriguez in the chat. My suggestion is that uh, he reads it and then he has a discussion that we are about to have it so that uh, we catch up a bit with time. We are a few minutes behind the, the agenda, but we are perfectly on time because I think it's really a problem of setting of the audio of the computer of Mr. Rodriguez. So Mr. Rodriguez, I hope you can hear us and I don't know if you agree on this proposal. We cannot hear you. Unfortunately, we cannot hear you. So maybe you can try to set it up again and if once succeeded, you can speak. Otherwise, if that's not the case, maybe you can write the answer on the chat so that we know with perspective. Can you try to do so? I'm very sorry, though, because he uh, it, it woke up super early. He's in the United States. I'm very I'm sorry really that sorry. not yes. to interact to him. OK, um, so let's follow this proposal. Um, so Mr. Rodriguez, please answer the, que the question either in the chat or as soon as you, you fix your audio settings, you can take the floor and interact in the next um, in the next item in the agenda. So many thanks, Ronald, for moderating these, uh, this panel discussion. I think it was very interesting. And many thanks to all panelists, because their answers were, were very enlightening. And uh, actually, I hope that uh, they are staying with us and are open to bring forward the discussion. Uh, as mentioned just a second uh, ago, uh, we will now have an open discussion, a general discussion in which uh, the participants, so the, the audience, can actually interact with the panelists. Um, they already asked uh, quite some question in the chat, so the panelists can also take the floor to answer uh, the question. And another thing we would like to do during this uh, these, uh, discussion, open discussion, uh, is to allow participants to actually tell us their experience on fertilizer quality assessment. We know we have many participants that would like to give us their opinion, for example, participants from China and, uh, and other countries. Um, so I would like now to give the floor to my colleague, uh, Mr. Aiko Kim, again from FAO, for moderating this general discussion. So Aiko, I leave you the floor, and I invite everybody to actively interact and, uh, and ask questions, uh, express opinion, whatever you feel like. Thank you, Lucrezia. Uh, good morning, afternoon, evening, uh, depending on where you are. Um, we have a quite uh, large audience, so I'll try to 
find out, uh, facilitate this session and give opportunity to uh, uh, the most uh, of you who have any questions or comments or issues to, to raise. Uh, I think uh, with the opening sessions and presentation and the panel discussion, there are a lot of questions that were raised. Um, I'd like to try to organize this and get uh, some uh, ways where you can provide inf information and tell which uh, perspective uh, you are uh, representing, which stakeholders you will represent in uh, tackling this issue. So um, please uh, raise your hands to uh, uh, ask your question. You can use the panel discussion uh, and I'll try to uh, put some of these issues as highlighted, but uh, as much as possible, I'd like to provide you the floor to, to ask the question directly and uh, make your point. I think uh, Hugh is just putting some of these uh, comments, I mean, the uh, answering uh, the questions uh, that uh, Ronald had asked. Uh, while I wait uh, for your uh, hands raised or pick up some question, I'll just read the, the answer uh, briefly of what our we can uh, try to, to find out if uh, you uh, manage to, to connect back. Is there first uh, any, uh, any countries, any, anyone who would like to have the opportunity to speak out? In the meantime, I'll uh, put up some of the comments, uh, highlight some of the comments in the channel, in the chat box. Um, I see, Yes, uh, from Bhutan, for example, uh, we have uh, Jamyang. Uh, uh, would you like to ask a question or comment? Uh, so, uh, hi. Hello, greetings from Bhutan to everybody. And uh, I have here this uh, especially a clarification or question to the panelist who was for example, only few countries in the world, they are manufacturing fertilizers. And then there are a lot of countries using fertilizers, but we are unable to manufacture by ourselves. Now, if an end user having suspected the quality of the fertilizers, and if we found that the quality of the fertilizer that imported is of substandard, and then if that is uh, being addressed to the manufacturers, uh, with the panelists, my question is, have they ever ex uh, experienced that kind of problem from the end users? And if they have faced, how did they solve the problem or address the issue? That is my concern, please. Thank you. Thank you, Jamian. Uh, very good point, uh, indeed. Uh, at FAO, we also deal uh, similar issues, but I'll first uh, give the opportunity for the panelists to answer this question on uh, well, uh, in fact, there are only few countries in the world and uh, there are uh, major companies that do produce. We have uh, heard from uh, some of the intervenant panelists the way uh, this is built. Uh, who would like to uh, try to provide some answer to Jamyang? And uh, I'll try to compliment. Maybe uh, from the European Union, um, uh, perspective, we can hear uh, how to deal this with this issue. European Union is dealing with this. Yeah. Yes, uh, yes. Um, I'm happy to, 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 to provide uh, what we do. Uh, so in, in our case, it, uh, we have a product regulation. So there are safeguard provisions uh, in case uh, and and as, as the European as the European Union, we just uh, we are responsible for the regulation and the implementation of the provisions, but not for the enforcement. 
So if at uh, the end the product uh, is not compliant to the requirements of the regulation, then uh, it's the responsibility of the member states uh, to follow um, the, the provisions that are there in the regulation and uh, um, firstly uh, notify, inform the, the, the manufacturer that there is a problem, that uh, a product is not compliant. Uh, and then uh, uh, notify also the Commission uh, to, to, to issue um, a warning, uh, meaning that uh, the, the market should uh, withdraw the, the product, which is uh, unsafe from their market. And then at the, at the last uh, possible way, there are also uh, penalties that may be imposed by the member states to the manufacturers that didn't uh, uh, follow the, the rules and did not uh, and, and put in the market uh, products that were not compliant to the to the harmonized rules to the to the regulation. Thank you for your answer. Uh, to complement some of the comments uh, that was made and uh, some of your question, at FAO also in the process where we do procure all over the world uh, for different projects uh, implemented. We have that uh, specific issue where they are actually uh, of hands of uh, actors at uh, countries where we do uh, procure at international level, but also at national level. And in this process, we have some ways we uh, have independent assessment either done locally, either through international uh, laboratory. And it, we need to see this problem in the value chain of fossilized production, like from producers, but also manufacture, the manufacturers, but the resellers and the third party that uh, are in this business. So it is not just because the producers do did produce a good quality of fertilizer, which is that's the first step that needs to be verified, but then throughout all this process, where do we need to check? When do we need to check and how often? It's also a question that uh, probably is differently answered in different countries. So that's that's also a very good uh, points that you made. Um, I'll follow up with uh, probably a colleague from the region Saud uh, from if you, not sure OM uh, stand for, but you'll explain this. <laughs> yes. This is from Oman. Yes, oh, for yes. Oman. Yes. Thank you very much, Kim. Uh, actually, it is not a, uh, exactly a question. I mean, like, um, as we know, there's inorganic fertilizer and there is organic fertilizer, right? So, is there is any, I mean, special test for analyzing uh, organic fertilizer, like for uh, pest, like nematode? Sometimes some countries importing in, uh, uh, organic fertilizer. It needs a special analysis, not only the content of element, even like even analysis uh, go, go beyond uh, nematode, for example, which is, which is very dangerous for uh, uh, soil and uh, biodiversity. Uh, one more thing <clears throat> can we add uh, also in, in our mind, also keep in mind, uh, a nuclear, nuclear test for uh, organic fertilizer when it is imported to countries or exported to other countries. Because uh, some countries they don't have, I mean, the devices and instrument to analyze or to test uh, the opportunity or the, the, I mean, the availability of this element in, uh, I mean, nuclear available in uh, in the in the organic fertilizer. Thank you. Thank you, Sud. Uh, I think your comments are well noted. Uh, um, anyone uh, from the panel would uh, like to um, add uh, some comments on these uh, issues where actually living organism uh, part uh, and biofertilizer is one of the many questions that, that is raised in the chat and that some of the even definition needs to be uh, probably uh, clear, uh, depending on what you, you're talking about. But uh, that's something that uh, at first, as far as I understood with uh, discussion with, with my colleague, these uh, international standards would start with uh, harmonizing protocols for uh, inorganic fertilizer, 
and then those issues of organic fertilizer and biofertilizer containing um, all type of different living organism needs also to, to be taken into, into account. Um, I'll follow up uh, if there is anyone from the panel uh, discussion or from the presenters, uh, Vinicia or uh, Lucrezia would like to add some, some ways that uh, we will take account uh, in this uh, network issues uh, specific to living organism regulations and so on. We will follow up. I think uh, that's a point that uh, I'll, I'll take note. Uh, Hong from China has uh, would like to intervene in the meantime. Yeah, you have the floor, Hong from China. Yeah, Hong Wang, up to you. Hello, 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 everyone. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And uh, I, I wouldn't like to uh, introduce the, the fertilizer management and uh, in China, uh, because of the, as you as a well known uh, fertilizer application is very important for China, <laughs> because of the to meet the demand of the uh, a larger population the food supply, and uh, the China fertilizer industry had made the good progress then in the past thirty years. And then last year, a total of about the 60 million tons of the MPK chemical fertilizer was applied in China. And uh, uh, in China, the fertilizer used uh, uh, to uh, uh, farmland should be uh, registered or licensed uh, uh, by the Chinese the government, uh, except for uh, those the fertilizer product, uh, which the common use the farmland and uh, have, have made the demand of the uh, China national standard. Uh, for example, ammonia sulfate and ammonia nitrate and uh, the potassium chloride. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, also in order to the control the fertilizer quality and uh, uh, in according the test the laboratories in China in trust uh, all uh, created by the government government office are responsible for the inspecting the fertilizer quality uh, uh, also provide the technical support for uh, control the fertilizer quality. Uh, in China, the standards uh, is very important uh, for the control fertilizer the production and uh, for the uh, fertilizer quality. Uh, also, uh, is the basis of the impacting the uh, fertilizer quality by the testing laboratory. Uh, now, the fertilizer standard systems uh, development by the Chinese uh, government may include the uh, national standards, uh, agricultural industry standards, and uh, the chemical industry standards. And uh, at last, I suggest, uh, I think that it's very important uh, 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 to establish the international a network of the fertilizer analysis. Um, we, I would like to, to the China would like to share experience in capability buildings of the fertilizer testing and the PT testing. And also we can share the experience of the soil testing and the fertilizer recommendation. Uh, I, I have the suggestion that uh, UFA uh, if possible, Infa should uh, attract more the fertilizer of the company to take a part to attend this uh, network. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Hong Wang, for our, uh, your explanation of uh, the situation in China and your proposal. I think it's very valid. Uh, we uh, definitely need the engagement of the fertilizer companies, the manufacturers, the major stakeholders in this value chain 
to to be fully involved in the process uh, uh, that's something probably that uh, will uh, take note and uh, take into account of the uh, uh, issue that uh, we will uh, uh, put in, in in the summary uh, I'll, I'll take this opportunity to add one comment uh, like uh, if there are some experience from other countries that uh, that are welcome uh, in the Philippines Gina uh, Gina Lino from the Philippines is, is telling that in, in the Philippines, uh, before fertilizer is certified, it has to also undergo an efficacy test. Uh, that means that the fertilizer performance is tested in the field and validate with crop yield and performance. That's a, a very important point also. Uh, it's not only the quality of the fertilizer in terms of uh, nutrient composition that is important, but also the efficacy, whether it it yields to uh, crop performance to increase yield. That's probably in regulation and in the way to see a more holistic approach of this issue, not only focused on specific issue that we are trying to tackle with this infa network, but also not lose the bigger picture. Any comment from a regulatory agency on whether, uh, for example, in the European Union, those issues are also taken uh, again, Mr. Nicola Poulou, uh, could you uh, uh, enlighten us on uh, how also the European Union is uh, uh, taking into account the efficacy of fertilizers? Uh, so, uh, in general, uh, the, the the new regulation, as as a product regulation, puts all the requirements in place. So there are quality, there are definitions. So what? At, uh, at the beginning that the product has to comply with the definition of, of its group. And then there are specific uh, requirements that are already set by the, by the co-legislations, by the European Parliament and the Council and the Member States. Uh, so uh, they have uh, described already in the regulation what is an efficient product. And then the manufacturer has just to comply with the requirements, has to, to comply with the rules and prove following a specific conformity assessment procedure that is described in the regulation that uh, his product is compliant to the regulation. So there, there are not extra things. The, the only part where uh, methods uh, will play a big role and methodology will be developed is the, is the efficacy of the, of the plant biostimulants. Uh, these are the only products in, in our regulation that uh, may have uh, microorganisms, living microorganisms in their composition. So in that case, the, the standards, SEN will develop standards, and then in the standards, uh, all these claims will be described. So the methodology to prove that your product functions as a, a plant biostimulant will be described through, uh, through standards, through European standards. In all other cases, in all other products, the requirements are there, are set, and you, the manufacturer has just to prove that his product complies to the respecting to the to the relevant uh, requirements nothing else needs to be done additionally thank you for uh, this uh, explanation things in the european union are taken actually uh, up front uh, and those uh, do produce the fertilizers actually need to comply to the specific terms of reference that was set by uh, the regulatory but yes yeah Sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt, just to make, because I didn't clarify this in the beginning. Uh, this is a regulation that harmonizes rules, but it does not uh, uh, prevent uh, other products that comply to national legislations to be in the national market. So it's not that this uh, regulation will harmonize all fertilizing products in the European Union. It runs in parallel with all the member states' legislation. So every member state has in place already their national legislations, and a manufacturer, for his own uh, reasons, interests, may choose to follow the national legislation and put uh, the the market uh, put in the in the market in the national market a product that complies only to the national legislation. So both uh, both the frameworks, let's say, will work in parallel. Thank you. Very uh, important uh, precision. Uh, I would like to just um, 
for the sake of time, uh, provide our two, there are two additional raised hand. So we will uh, provide the, uh, I will provide the floor to uh, Karim and Mohamed. Then we'll try to wrap up this session and uh, Lucrezia will try to summarize uh, the action forward for, for today. First, uh, Karim, you have the floor. You can unmute first and can yeah. you yes, we hear you very well. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Uh, I just want to share some our experience in the uh, quality control of fertilizer uh, in Iran. Uh, I'm from Iran. Uh, yeah, the, uh, we have a national uh, legislation uh, for uh, quality control uh, of fertilizer, uh, and all of companies uh, have to. Uh, register companies that uh, produce or import or distribute the fertilizer have to register their uh, products uh, um, before uh, distribution. Uh, and the Soil and Water uh, Research Institute is uh, responsible for uh, registration and quality control of fertilizer and uh, uh, we, after uh, registration, uh, we uh, uh, sampling uh, randomly from uh, marketing uh, to quality control and uh, 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 all of companies uh, have to uh, uh, follow the legislation and we uh, use uh, national uh, SOPs for uh, uh, analysis of fertilizer, but this uh, national uh, standards are adopted from uh, ISO and uh, it's, uh, it can uh, uh, used globally. Uh, but uh, I have some comments, uh, but I don't know uh, that uh, the following, uh, following uh, discussions, uh, that this network is cover all of these uh, discussions or not. But uh, I think, uh, first of all, uh, some difficulties arise from the different in, uh, definitions uh, and uh, concepts and uh, sometimes terminology in the, in the case of uh, fertilizer, uh, especially in new fertilizer. Uh, this uh, network, uh, INFA, uh, should be uh, attempt to harmonize the, all of definition, concepts, and terminology in the case of fertilizer. And sometimes uh, the, the, the difficulties from the, uh, arise from the uh, different specification for different uh, fertilizer. It should be harmonized in the globally uh, until the, we uh, can speak in the harmonized way to quality control. And, uh, and uh, finally, we need to uh, harmonize the uh, uh, harmonize the analysis methods, the last step is the harmonize the, the uh, analysis method to the cost control of fertilizer. Uh, but uh, we have a big issue in the case of uh, new fertilizer that sometimes uh, we call them uh, like, uh, uh, like uh, I think, uh, beneficial, uh, beneficial substance like uh, amino acid or solid extracts or uh, folic or humic acid. Uh, this uh, kind of fertilizer uh, have a different definition in the different countries and the different methods to uh, analyze of them. The, many of the issues that arise from the, this uh, kind of fertilizer in the quality control. I, I don't know that uh, this uh, network could have covered uh, this uh, fertilizer, uh, uh, also biofertilizer, organic, organic fertilizer, or gross media or not. Uh, yeah, this area is very important in the all of case, uh, analyzing concept definitions and cl also classification uh, is uh, very important. Uh, it is uh, my suggestion to uh, following working in this uh, network. Thank you very much. Thank you, Karim, for sharing this experience from Iran. A very good point. New fertilizer, new formulation, new type of fertilizer coming uh, in the market. That would be also a bit of a challenge to to tackle uh, as 
in in uh, and that's something that we need to to be aware. Uh, last, I'll, as I promised, I'll give you the last uh, opportunity for Mohamed uh, Yakubu to intervene. Uh, if you could uh, be brief and uh, uh, tell us uh, your comments on question, Mohamed. Uh, yes, no. We, you can unmute if you want to intervene. No. We cannot hear you. Mm. It seems that we we can't hear Mohamed. We can uh, try to to find uh, if you have uh, your comments in the chat box or your question. We will try to follow. up. Uh, thank you for all your uh, comments, questions, and follow-up. Uh, we've, we've heard during uh, this uh, uh, general discussion uh, experience uh, from Bhutan, China, Iran, uh, Oman, and uh, different countries, uh, different uh, points that uh, was raised in addition to the presentation that we, we had today. So. We'll try to integrate all this and uh, try to uh, have uh, uh, in the in the infa uh, procedure uh, and uh, these issues uh, that are important for specific countries will will also need to be uh, engaging uh, other stakeholders, as uh, mentioned, and uh, specific issues uh, that uh, that are uh, mentioned. Um, Lucrezia, uh, will uh, I can we can wrap up the, this in our discussion session. There are a few points from our um, participant that are very useful to to take into account and uh, take note in the uh, developed uh, procedure for for the follow up. Now I'll leave you back uh, the floor to uh, wrap up uh, today's session with the next item on the mission and objective in, of INFA. Many, many you. thanks, Aiko, and many thanks to all participants that uh, contributed to the discussion. We will reflect your, your thoughts, your comments, and your experience in the proceeding, indeed, and we will also try to address your concerns in the work plan that we will develop tomorrow. So in that sense, uh, uh, we will either integrate them in the info work plan or with uh, the support and clearance from my colleague, Vinisa, we will try to address them in the implementation plan of uh, the fertilizer code. Uh, we are now moving to the last item in the agenda, that is the definition of the mission and objectives of info. <coughs> uh, I will share my screen now. I have just a few slides to show you that also link to the work of Glossolan, because I think we don't have to start from scratch, but we can actually take the, the work of Glossolan as a reference. Uh, Vinisa, just for your information, because uh, uh, you saw I lost the connection already once because of the bad weather in Rome, I'm working on the drive. So in case I lose the connection again, please take it over. Uh, so mission and objectives of uh, INFA, I would quickly like to recall the mission and objectives of uh, Glossolan that we can take as a reference to actually define the one of INFA. So the mission of Glossolan is that to improve the quality of soil laboratory data to support decision making at field and policy levels in support um, of the overarching goals um, of eradicating hunger by achieving food security and improving nutrition and ensuring environmental quality. In this context, the work of Glossolan is connected to the GSP pillars of action. In terms of ob objectives, we had uh, the three objectives that I mentioned already in the presentation, so to strengthen the performance of laboratories and to harmonize uh, the methods of analysis and eventually providing a certification. So for INFA, if you like, we can take, uh, this is an interactive uh, discussion, okay? So as you can see, I will uh, edit the slides as we discuss and, and, uh, and make decisions. So in terms of INFA, if you want to stick to what actually was decided for Glossolan, we can say that the mission of INFA is to improve the quality of fertilizer laboratory data to support the decision making at field and policy levels. And then the rest uh, um, remains the same. Uh, I will open the chat so we can, uh, uh, you can tell me your opinion on this. 
So would you agree on this uh, mission for the network? So it's the same of uh, the one of Glossolam, but just we replace soil with fertilizer. If, if you say no, please type it in, uh, in the chat. Uh, okay, here I see that you agree on the methods. Okay, so mission is fine. In terms of objectives, uh, again, would you like to keep the ones of uh, Glossolan, so to strengthen the performance of laboratories to the use of standardized methods and protocols? This is the first one, and I actually the first feedback I read in the chat actually stated this, um, to work on the, the harmonization of methods. And this was also reflected in the first presentation that Gloss uh, the Ronald gave. Uh, and then the second objectives could be to harmonize fertilizer analysis uh, um, methods. Wait oh, a moment, the program, through the use of standardized methods and protocol. To harmonize fertilizer analysis method, I think this should be on data. Um, this should be data, sorry. To harmonize fertilizer analysis data so that information would be comparable and interpretable across laboratories, countries, and regions. And eventually, if we want uh, and uh, we can, in the near future, to provide a certification for technical competencies in laboratory analysis. So, do you agree on these uh, three objectives? Do you have other objectives to? to propose or uh, like uh, we can edit the these ones. Uh, yeah, the third objective would have conflict with ISO. This is uh, something that we already discussed uh, in uh, Glossolam because also in that case, uh, um, <laughs> we have the, the same problem, but the difference is that our certification would be uh, for free. Harmonized standards of fertilizer quality. Um, fertilizer to harmonize fertilizer so that ah uh, yeah sorry fertilizer uh, thanks um, so yeah, what about this? we have an answer from Gina Gina please yes I'm looking at the chat but please take the floor Gina? Yeah. Yeah. So I having problem with my internet. Actually, I have two units. Can you please hear me? Yes. Uh, okay. So actually, I think um, the first objective already pertains to the... Uh, okay. Sorry, now Sorry, now I hear you very bad. Gina? I'm not sure if it's my connection. Filippo, can you hear? Ah, oh, we lost her. Okay, um, I adapted the, the objectives to, to, to fertilizer. Okay, so the first, I'm sorry, can I Gina. speak? Yes. Yeah, the first objective um, referring to the performance of laboratories already speaks about the standardized methods and the um, touch on the fertilizer method and protocol. So that's why I propose objective. Did I hear you? Talk about better. I cannot understand anything. <laughs> Almost. Maybe can, can you type in the chat, please? Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's very breaking. Already. 
<laughs> Sorry. Um, hello. Uh, Objective. Uh, nothing. Mm, let me try here. Meanwhile, I'm uh, I'm reading in the chat and try to adjust. So let's go objective by objective. The first one is to strengthen the performance of laboratories through the use of standardized methods and protocols. Is this fine? Maybe here I can say fertilizer, fertilizer laboratory. So first one is fine to strengthen the performance of fertilizer laboratory through use of standardized methods and protocol. Okay, the second one, um, second and third one are a bit more criticized eventually. Uh, so to harmonize fertilizer analysis data so that uh, fertilizer information would be comparable and interpretable across laboratories, countries, and regions. Is this second objective fine? Meanwhile, I turn this one into black. Second objective. There is a comment on should be fertilizer information. Okay, yes, this I addressed. Um, second objective should talk about harmonized standards of fertilizer to harmonize. Um, harmonize, to harmonize like this, standards of uh, Indeed, we should uh, uh, avoid the overlaps. That's why in point one, we were talking about methods. In point two, we, talk, we were talking about um, data. But harmonize the standards, again, this, if I write to harmonize standards, it refers to methods and protocols, I think. Data, yeah, okay. Okay, that tells me data. So harmonize fertilizer, fertilizer analysis data so that fertilizer information would be comparable and interpretable across laboratories, countries and regions. Okay. Okay. Uh, black. So do not look at specific activities now, just think about what we should actually do in general terms. Tomorrow we really expand the topic and look into specific activities to address these objectives. The last point, very much criticized I saw because of the overlap with ISO. Karim, I see you have a hands up. Would you like to take the floor? Yeah, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I uh, just uh, want to comment uh, for objective two. I think uh, fertilizer standards is better. It is not just for uh, fertilizer analysis data. Maybe we want to harmonize uh, uh, through uh, definitions or concepts or uh, uh, classification or all of, all of the standards about uh, fertilizer. Uh, it is not just for data. Uh, I think fertilizer standards is better than the fertilizer analysis data. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, so what if I write so harmonize fertilizer standards and in bracket, I put uh, data um, classification, you said, right? Yeah, concepts and definitions.
Okay. What about the proposal of uh, Karim? So to harmonize fertilizer standards, this includes data classification and definitions so that fertilizer information would be comparable and interpretable across laboratories, countries and regions. Don't look at the certification part yet. Uh, we will talk about it uh, um, in, a, in a second. Do you agree on this uh, proposal? So this uh, review of uh, the second objective of INFA? If I don't read no, I guess it's a yes. Okay. So we move to the third objective. Very ah, Jam Yang, you would like to take the floor? Uh, right. Uh, I would like to suggest when it comes to the objectives, uh, what about if we, because in the objective one, we are directly saying to strengthen the performance of fertilizer laboratories through standard method. So what, and then in the objective two, we are saying harmonize fertilizer standards. So I feel that first we need to standardize. So it means harmonizing the methods. So if we put serial number two as serial number one, and then serial number one should become number two, so then that will have a sequence. So later on, then we can check the performance of the fertilizer laboratories because we have now already standardized the method. So this is what I am feeling that to make it more clear, but I don't know how you might uh, take it, the sequence. So first we need to standardize the fertilizer uh, methods. And then after that, the performance of the laboratory based on that. So there is a sequence. And this is what I would like to suggest. Okay, so I got you, I got it wrong because I thought I had to switch two and one, but no, the first should be to standardize, um, right. to standardize methods and protocols. Right. Wait, let me do like this. For the analysis of fertilizer. Then the second one would be to... Um, the performance of the laboratories. To strengthen, right? Right. the performance of fertilizer laboratories. Well, again, here through the use. Oh, here either to strengthen or to ensure their performance. The use of standardized methods and protocols. And the third one would be this so one, right? To harmonize fertilizer standards. Right, Jam Young? Uh, I think I will be uh, number one to standardize the method. That's fine, good. And then based on the objective one, we have uh, the objective is to strengthen and ensure the performance of the laboratories. That is good. Then to harmonize the fertilizer standard data. Now, isn't that uh, somehow captured in one and two? Or do we have to make it very specific in number three, as you mentioned, this is data and classification? Maybe so, data data is addressed, the classification and definitions. I think it's something we will do in parallel anyway, 
but okay. I'm not right. sure if we want to have it as a specific objective. Right. Uh, otherwise, uh, when we say reflect the stand method is standardized, that means data, we are actually meaning data, the final one. Mm -hmm. And two, this is somehow performance means uh, uh, equality of the fertilizer data. So mm -hmm. somehow they are overlapping. The, except in serial number three, the classification and uh, definition that should be put under three then as you kept. So that I would agree. So this links to the organization. So to standardize methods and protocols for the analysis of fertilizers. And this uh, links uh, to the harmonization of fertilizer quality data. Right? Then to strengthen or ensure the performance of fertilizer laboratories through the use of standardized methods and protocols. And then to harmonize fertilizer standards in terms of classification and definitions so that fertilizer information would be comparable and interpretable across laboratories, countries, and regions. Um, there are comments in the chat saying that uh, for objective two, to say to ensure is, um, it implies a complicated process. So maybe we should stick to strengthen only. Actually, that's what I was thinking um, as well. Although if we say to ensure, I, I guess this, we would do it through the organization of a PT, no? Well, let me put this in red. Okay, um, if you all agree on these uh, three revised objectives, uh, we will talk about the last one, very conflicting one, a provision of the uh, certification. Again, this was based on what Glossolan aims to, but we, we don't have to stick to this if, we, if it's not apl applicable to, to INFA. So, fertilizer quality standard. Um, So shall we talk about the certification? Maybe we put it as an aspiration as we did in, uh, in Glossolan. Again, I would like to, to remind you that uh, we, don't mean, we don't mean to duplicate efforts, uh, but uh, um, we face the same conflict, let's say with ISO also in Glossolan, so in soil analysis. But the added value of our networks is that we do all the work for free and we make it available to everybody for free. While ISO, uh, well, they, you have to pay if you want to have any ISO certification or even material. So there is a kind of overlap, but um, our work are a bit, uh, as a, a bit a different target. Uh, so let me see. So Gina is saying that if objective, is, uh, objective three is to meet the standard on fertilizer quality, then this would be the basis of certification. No, I don't, we don't have a chair of INFA yet to help me on this discussion. But so I would like to ask my colleague Vinisa actually for help because she knows, um, and also my colleague um, Haiko, please, to help us get into a decision on the objectives of, of INFA because they know the topic of fertilizer much better than I do. So Vinisa, Haiko, what do you think also on this part on ISO and the certification? I think, Lucrezia, that the, uh, the objective number four, maybe it's better to put it on hold because not all the labs will aim to certification necessarily, but only to qualification and, and the competence. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, not all of them necessarily as it's an aspiration for them to be certified. Many of them, they won't because it is more difficult or 
yeah, I think it should be put on hold, I guess. Or maybe I can just say, um, I remove this part. Yeah. I don't put it as an objective. I just write yeah. a note. Yeah. So well, that's my uh, opinion. We say that um, certification uh, is, not, uh, is not a priority, right? So we aim uh, to... Um, yeah, not for all the labs. Things. Yeah, is not a priority. For laboratories so infa can aim to yeah we have a suggestion proficiency instead of certification could 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 work also so infa can aim to um improve the quality of the analysis only yeah we could put it as a vision no instead of a mission it's something like could be done in in the future or not for all the labs, maybe. Vision, yeah. So what about this proposal from uh, Venetian? Certificate of proficiency testing of fertilizer. Um, but we will do it, I think, under here, the proficiency testing. We do it the uh, way we standardize the methods and then the data. So yes, we can release certificates of proficiency testing as we are doing in uh, Glossolan. OK, I don't see <laughs> any. Any other? Uh, could I yes. propose uh, some some ways we could uh, move this? I, I think uh, we can leave it uh, and propose to the participants. Like we'll have another session tomorrow, but uh, this is at the current stage uh, the proposed objective. But as it was mentioned in the panel in, uh, in the discussion and some of the intervenants, it needs also to be put in the perspective not on the, only of the regulatory bodies but also like uh, have the engagement of the producers, the manufacturers, the retailers. What mm -hmm. is the constraint? And can we like uh, in implementing this help? I, I mean, the major focus would be how to help this, this system to improve the quality of the fertilizer as a final product to be provided to the farmer. So I think those uh, objectives needs to be put into the context of how can we really improve the current status where we have issues throughout the value chain of this quality. So is that uh, this proficiency test or uh, separate uh, I mean, uh, certification, um, something that we need? Uh, this needs further discussion whether the regulatory body is also is involved, but also the manufacturers, if there is, uh, and the retailers, do, what's their, their I think we, we still uh, need some further feedback to finalize the, the objective. So I keep them like this and then we we eventually finalize them by email or would that, that's my proposal for now. I think there are good discussion in the panels. There are pros and cons. There are some issues that need to be uh, fought. And uh, I think uh, we, we can at this stage uh, put this uh, here and have further uh, feedback and internal uh, discussions on the final and propose to the audience, I mean, to the participants, uh, the final one to be uh, approved. Okay, do you agree on uh, this proposal? So basically we keep these uh, as uh, uh, a draft, let's say, and then uh, let me write it down, uh, we, final endorsement of the objectives by email um, after that, uh, um, well, manufact uh, manufacturers, right? You call them uh, manufacturers, uh, retailers, um, and uh, policy, policy actors um, are, are involved 
or actually, uh, well, I write like this and then I, I fix it a bit. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so the final endorse endorsement of the objectives will be done by emails. After that, we have a, a, a bit of discussion also with the other stakeholders. Uh, okay. Now, uh, this is just to ask you for an opinion. One thing we did in Glossoland was to actually define or actually identify foreseen impacts and indicators of performance so that we can really prove our, our progresses and, uh, and, and work no? in, um, to everybody who would ask us for it. Uh, maybe we are late on time, so I don't think uh, we have the time to do it, but if you like, well, here are reported the ones we have in Glossan, we could uh, um, revise the, um, the foreseen impacts and the indicators of performance we have in Glossan and send you a draft for your consideration so that you can uh, approve it, uh, suggest uh, changes and, uh, or actually even uh, delay things or add. Do you agree on this? And do you think that actually having foreseen impacts and indicators of performance would be useful for Infa as well? I don't see no's. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so we will uh, work this out by email and we will send you a draft. Let me write a note on this. So the GSP um, to draft uh, to draft them and send them to participants for review and endorsement. I think this is very important uh, also in terms of uh, project uh, pro uh, project proposals, applications, and also awareness raising because it can really help to, especially the foreseen impacts, to show the added value of our work. Okay, so I'm sorry we are 15 minutes uh, late, but um, we, we are done with the program for today. So congratulations and many thanks to, to all of you that participated to the discussion, to the panelists and to my colleagues that uh, presented and uh, helped moderate in the session. So many thanks and we are looking forward to see you tomorrow at the same time to really work on the governance and work plan of Infa. So we will look into the details and address also the concerns, some of the concerns you raised today. So thank you very much and I wish you a good rest of the day, evening or, or night. Many thanks. Bye.